After suffering the lowest grossing opening weekend for any movie within the MCU, The Marvels has now been out in theaters for a week, and even then, despite all that, it still has made less than the opening weekend for 2008's Incredible Hulk, which actually held the record for the lowest grossing opening for any movie within the Marvel MCU. Of course, the tens of Marvel stands still out there taking their daily dose of coping will probably try to argue that the movie is actually really good and that word of mouth will basically carry it forward, kind of like it did with Disney's Elemental, right? Never mind the fact that Elemental went on to lose around $50 million for Disney. In reality, this is probably more akin to what we saw with The Flash that made around 50% of its entire box office gross during its opening weekend and then falling off a cliff, bringing in less than $300 million globally during its entire theatrical run. It's now being reported that the Marvels experienced an 87% Friday to Friday drop off, whereas the Flash had closer to a 72% drop off in its second weekend. And this is obviously bad news for the Marvels when you consider that on the most conservative estimates, it needs to make around $500 million at the global box office in order to just break even. Even though the fact of the matter is the number is probably closer to seven to eight hundred million dollars that it needs to make. And right now it's actually pacing worse than The Flash, which is a recent comic book movie that made less than three hundred million dollars globally. In other words, Marvel's in big trouble. And we've kind of known this for some time now, too, because besides Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, they really haven't had any big hits come out within the last few years. And this is a studio that at the very minimum used to have at least a mild hit with everything that they released. And now people have just given up not only on the box office, but also on their Disney Plus platform, too. And I think the studio understands this, too, which is why they're basically delaying everything back to 2025, except for Deadpool, because that's the last thing that they actually have that people have a mild interest in. So when you combine information like these delays that they're doing, reports of extensive rewrites on future projects, uh, news of Marvel Spotlight, for instance, it really does come across as the studio trying to correct course because you don't change up with what you're doing if what you're doing is actually working. And that's why I think the MCU as we know it is basically dead at this point. And you know, it had a pretty good run for a while, but the novelty of it, I think, kind of wore off for a bit because the whole thing about having a shared universe was pretty interesting when it first came about. But now people are just kind of done with that and they just want good projects. And the studio kind of saw the writing on the wall for a while. And that's why after Endgame, they started bringing in activist writers and directors because they just wanted to pander to various demographics. Put a chicken in and make a lemon gay! This blatant pandering that they were doing was already them shifting focus from how they used to do things in the past and instead tried to find something else because they needed to stay relevant and the ensuing controversy for a while did help them but now that we saw with the Marvels that that really doesn't work anymore and now they're trying to shift focus and do something else. This isn't necessarily about getting woke going broke or anything like that. It's about a studio trying to throw things at the wall and seeing what sticks and we saw going woke really doesn't work for them anymore so now they need to try something else and I think what they're doing now is basically the latest attempt at that. Is it going to actually work and fix things? Eh, probably not, or at least, like I said, not fix the MCU as we know it. I think what we're going to do is see a more return to form where everything is basically built as an individual movie. It's no longer being predicated on you have to watch the previous one to understand this one, and you need to watch this one to set up for the next one. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. And to me, that's what they really should be doing is just treating every movie like it's its own thing and don't make it where it has to build up to something else. Or that's really the only reason people are watching it because we can see the results of that and people are just checking out.